Hello everybody and welcome back to another tutorial. Today I'm going to be going over this cool time delay retro title sequence that I created. There's a few different techniques that went into creating these letters that have this echo looking time delay effect on them as well as the rays and the animation. None of it's very complicated so I think this is a tutorial that pretty much anybody can follow so let's go ahead and get right into it. So to begin we need to create a new composition, this button here. Make it 24 frames per second, 1080p, and click OK. Next, we need to create a new null object. And I'm going to call this null main. Next, I'm going to duplicate this null object, Control D on the keyboard or Edit Duplicate. And I'm going to rename it to null1. Hit P on the keyboard to bring up the position value of both of these nulls that we've created. Now, Alt click on null1 and with this little function, pick whip the position value of null1 to the position value of main. Now before closing out of this, we need to add a small expression. Period, value, at with a capital A, and time with a capital T, open parentheses, time all lowercase, minus, and I'm going to say 0.1, close parentheses. Now essentially what this is doing is it's saying, I want null1 to copy whatever the position value for main is, however I want it to do it 0.1 second after main does it. Moving on, I'm going to select and then duplicate null1 two more times. This is because I'm going to have a four letter word, however you should have as many null objects as there are letters in the word for the title you're creating. Next we need to open up the position information for null2 and 3. Uh, click these drop down arrows to open up the expression and we need to change the value from 0.1 on 2 to 0.2 and then on 3 to 0.3. Then control A on the keyboard to select all of them then click the arrow to collapse everything. Moving on, the next thing we're going to do is create the letters for the title. So since I have four null objects, I'm going to pick a four letter word. How about cool? So I'm going to click the text box. I'm going to create a capital C duplicate the C and change the second one to an O. I'm going to duplicate the O and then duplicate it one more time and change the third one to an L. And now we need to spread these out so we can actually see what it is we're typing. Doesn't have to be perfect. Looks pretty good. If you want, you can click this button here and then turn on the title action safe to see the center of your screen. So that way you can reposition everything to correctly line up with the center. The next step is fairly predictable. We're going to parent the C to main, the first O to null 1, the second O to null 2, and the L to null 3. And that pretty much concludes the main technique behind this entire effect. If you select the main null and hit P on the keyboard, you bring up its position information, which everything is linked to. Click the stopwatch, and then you can create any animation you like with this and the letters are going to follow with the time delay on them. So if you play this back, you get something like this. Now your goal here for the title is just to create a cool animation that comes on from off screen, stays for long enough to be able to read it, and then flies away. In the original, I had it come down from the top and do a loop before spitting out the left side, but you can have it be anything you want. Just be creative on this front. In this instance, I'm going to delete all these keyframes, and at the beginning, I'm going to drag null down to the bottom and have it come from the bottom of the screen. I'm gonna move forward just a little bit and have it fly up a little too far, and then go forward a little more, back down a little bit, forward a little more, up to the middle, forward a little more, create a new keyframe and then fly forward a little more and pull everything off to the left. I'm going to select all of these keyframes, right click, keyframe assistance, easy ease, and if I play this back, you get something about like that. Next, we need to pre-compose everything we've created so far, but first let's turn on the motion blur for all of our letters and the composition. Now we can select everything and choose layer, pre-compose. I'm going to call this the letters comp. Next, we need to select the pre comp and duplicate it. Right click on the new one and choose time, enable time remapping. Now we need to scrub forward until the animation is just ending right there and create a new keyframe. And then I'm going to drag this keyframe out by one frame. 
Then I'm going to duplicate this comp we just created and hit U on the keyboard to bring up that information. And I'm going to move the keyframe out one more, duplicate one more time, hit U, and move the keyframe out one more time. Now in the original, I think I actually had five copies. So I'm going to duplicate this two more times, sorry about that, and then move each keyframe forward so it creates this respective pattern here. Now I need to reverse the order of this entire composition. So let's move the bottom one to the top and then right below that, below that, and so on and so forth. There we go. Now before playing this back, I wanna add a tint effect. So you can come over here and type in tint to everything but the top composition. So I'm gonna add this to the second one down and change white to, how about red? Copy that tint effect, paste it to the next one down. We can change red to, how about a pinkish color? Paste to the next one down, change that to maybe purple. The next one down, change purple to about blue. And finally, the last one, we're going to change the color to somewhere in the light blue range. Just as before, hit Control A to select everything and then click the arrow to collapse it all. Now, if you play this back, you can see we've created this colorful echo effect as I did in the original. You can be creative on this and make the echo colors anything you want. It's totally up to you. I just thought these looked pretty cool in retro. The next step we need to do is create the light rays. So to do that, I'm going to go to our project window and find our composition. Hit Control D to duplicate it. Open up the new one by double clicking on it and go to the composition settings and I'm gonna rename this light rays. Now we need to select everything in the light rays comp and pre-compose it. And I'm just going to call this our mat. Now we need to add a tint effect to our mat and set both of the colors to be white. Next, we need to add a black solid to the background. And now we need to add a new adjustment layer and then go over here and type in CC radial fast blur. Drag that on. Now we're gonna set the center to be somewhere right above the middle of our composition and then change the amount all the way up to 100. Next, we can go back into our main composition, go to the project window and find light rays. Drag that on top. Uh, toggle switch is down here to show the blend modes. Set the blend mode of light ray to screen. Right now it's a little intense, so I wanna turn the opacity, hit T on the keyboard, turn the opacity down to somewhere about 50%, and then I'm going to go over here and add a tint effect to our light rays, and change the white value to somewhere in the blue range. Now there were two more things I did to this in the original effect. I found this really cool light leak stock footage online. So I'm gonna put a Google Drive link down in the description where you can download this if you wanna add it to your project. It's not necessary, but I'm gonna show you how I set this up really quick. So go to our main composition and drag the light leak on top. Then I'm going to time stretch to 50%, just so it goes a bit quicker. And then I'm going to find a moment where it comes in, so right about there, and drag that closer to the beginning. Hit T on the keyboard to bring up the opacity. Set the opacity at the beginning to be zero. Move forward till the letters are just about centered like that, and set the opacity up to somewhere about 50. Move forward again until they're coming across the center one more time, and set the opacity down to zero. Back up until they're flying back to the center, back up just a tiny bit, and then forward until they're centered and down to zero. And if you play this back. Also, one more thing I did in the original that I thought looked cool was I went to the point when the light rays were at their brightest, right here, and created a new adjustment layer, and I put it below the light rays, but above all of our duplicated comps, and set a tint effect to make it completely white. Then I hit the stopwatch on amount to tint, went forward a few frames and turned it down to zero, and then went back a few frames and turned it down to zero. So if you play this back, there's a moment where it washes out all the letters. And finally, to seal the retro effect, I added another new adjustment layer on top of everything, and I went over to the effects and presets and typed in TV and then I dropped this old TV effect onto the adjustment layer 
and then on the old TV effect where it says wave warp, I turned that down to 20. And then I set the opacity of that adjustment layer, T on the keyboard, to 20 as well. This just gives it kind of a cool old retro effect. If I zoom in here and turn this off, you can see what it's doing. And I just kind of think that helped blend the whole thing together. All right, and with that, this tutorial is just about finished. The coolest thing I think about this setup is that if you want, you can double click one of these letters comps, come back in here, and then change this word to be anything you want. Say I could make the C an N, the O an E, the second O an A, and the L I could make a T, and now it says neat instead of cool. And also, you can go back to our main null hit P on the keyboard to bring up its position information and then change this animation to do something actually completely different. And the cool thing is, is it all live updates back here in our final composition. If you play this back, you can see the new updates that we have just created. Another thing I'll mention is that we set this whole thing up so that way the delay is on the position values. You're also welcome to do it where the delay is on the scale values or the rotation values and create some really interesting effects. I threw together this funny 80s looking title by linking up the scale value and then scaling it down to center and watching the delay react. Anyway, that just about does it for this tutorial. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like the video if you learned something and consider subscribing for more tutorials.